In the previous video, I gave a very brief introduction to quantum. And in that video, I talked, uh, one of the key points that I talked about was that atoms can only emit or absorb photons that have specific amounts of energy. And this phenomenon is explained by the Bohr model of the atom. And the Bohr model of the atom is a theory of how the atom is actually put together. And we've talked a little bit about the structure of the atom. So we've already talked about how at the center of the atom, there's um, the nucleus, which contains neut neutrons and protons. And we've also talked about how the electrons of the atom occupy this area of space around the nucleus. So the electrons are just in this space that we call the electron cloud. Bohr's model of the atom describes the electron cloud with more detail than this original explanation that I gave to you. In the Bohr's model of the atom it says that some of the electrons in the atom are allowed to occupy a very specific area of space. This is a sphere, not a circle, so it's not like, it's not a racetrack. This is a spherical area of space, and the electrons are allowed to exist anywhere within this sphere. So again, they're not on a track going around the nucleus. They're just hanging out anywhere within this boundary. This particular area of space we refer to as an energy level. And this energy level, this particular one, is called N equals 1, which I know is kind of a silly name. Its name is not 1. Its name is N equals 1. It's a goofy name. So atoms have multiple energy levels, not just N equals 1. So there's going to be another area of space where some electrons are allowed to occupy. And this is going to be a larger sphere. Again, this is three-dimensional. So the uh, larger sphere actually encompasses the smaller n equals ones. So this is a very large circle. And when electrons are in this particular energy level, they're allowed to occupy any area within that boundary. So again, it's not like a racetrack. They're not stuck here. And it's also not a ring. They're not stuck like this. They can be anywhere inside the boundaries of this pink sphere. So this is another energy level. And this particular energy level is called N equals 2. And these energy levels continue on and on. Theoretically, they continue to infinity. But in practicality, they only go to about 7 or 8. So here's a larger sphere. This is a larger area of space where electrons can occupy. This larger green area of space encompasses N equals 2, which also encompasses N equals 1. This larger area of space, as you can imagine, we call this n equals 3. And the next one out, we would call n equals 4, and then n equals 5, and so on. So again, the electrons are allowed to occupy any area of space as long as they stay within the boundary of their energy level. Each energy level is associated with a specific amount of energy. Um, just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to say that the energy level of n equals 1 is 5 joules. Joules is a unit of energy. The energy level for n equals 2 is, let's say, 10 joules. And for n equals 3, let's say that it is 18 joules. Now, I want to say that those are very unreasonable numbers for the energy of an energy level, but just trying to keep simple numbers for the purpose of the video. So when we say that the n equals 1 energy level is 5 joules, what that actually means is that the electrons that are in that energy level, this electron right here, this electron has 5 joules of energy. And if we have an electron that is out here in the n equals 3 level, this electron has 18 joules of energy. And it doesn't matter if it's on the boundary like I've drawn it or if that electron is somewhere inside. If we have an n equals 3 electron, it's going to have 18 joules of energy. So it's a high energy electron. And this trend of increasing energy is one that we see holds true at, even as the energy levels get bigger and bigger. So the n equals 1 is always the lowest energy level and then they continue to get higher and higher as we go further and further out. Now, the electrons are allowed to move between energy levels. So electrons that are out in the n equals 3 level, they are allowed to you know, change their environment and move into an n equals 2 or move all the way to n equals 1. And likewise, electrons that are inside at the n equals 1 level, they're free to move out to a higher, higher energy level. The movement of electrons among these energy levels is what is responsible for the transmission of energy between two atoms.
So for example, if this particular atom right here absorbs energy, that energy is actually going to be absorbed by the electrons in the atom. So any incoming energy to this particular atom is going to be absorbed by this electron or maybe by this electron out here. But that is where this incoming electron energy goes. And also energy that is coming out of the atom is coming out from the electrons, not coming out from the nucleus, it's coming out from the electrons. So it's the electrons that are exchanging energy when energy is moved from one atom to another. Now where this all ties together is that when an electron moves from one energy level to another, it has to either absorb energy if it's moving to a higher level or emit energy if it's moving to a lower level. And the energy that's absorbed or emitted has to be exactly equal to the difference in energy between the two levels. So let's say for this particular atom that we've drawn, if the electron wants to move from n equals 1, which is 5 joules, to n equals 2, which is 10 joules, it must absorb 5 joules in the form of a photon. In order for the electron to be allowed in the n equals 2 level, it has to possess 10 joules of energy. It currently only has 5, which means it needs to absorb 5 more. So that might look like 5 joules of energy come in, so we've got five joules of energy coming in. The electron absorbs those five joules of energy, and then it is allowed to hop itself out to a higher energy level where it now has 10 joules. And that would be an example of the atom absorbing energy. In the other direction, if we have uh, electrons moving to a lower energy level, so let's move over to this guy here and look at him. In order for this electron to move to a lower level, it has to emit or give off energy. So in this case, to move from, we are at n equals 3, which is 18 joules, to let's have it move, let's have it move all the way to n equals 1 n equals 1, which is only 5 joules, that electron must emit or give off 13 joules, the difference in energy between those, those two energy levels. So what would that look like? Well, that would look like the electron moving down to the lower energy level, 5 joules, and then the photon being emitted, 13 joules difference.